I'm Kavi. I'm the CEO and founder of Rose Health. Rose is a digital mental health platform where we leverage deep tech and deep science for the early detection of depression and mood disorders. I founded Rose about three and a half years ago, really through a personal experience uh, as well as a business experience, a business realization. My background is in healthcare investment, so. Uh, was a healthcare M&A investment banker for JP Morgan and for SunTrust, and then transitioned over to Northwell Health, where I worked in their new ventures and, and strategy group and worked as a young executive to build our own health insurance company, CareConnect. And that's really where I saw the business side for a digital solution, saw that there were tools available for chronic conditions like diabetes, heart disease, oncology, but sort of lack of tools that were available for mental health. And that really showed in our financials as well as with, uh, with leakage from our, our platform, um, because we would see our patients going through decompensation and, uh, and leaving the health system as a whole. But what ultimately allowed me to form Rose was more on the personal side. Um, after experiencing, after working about 80 to 100 hours a week for that seven year period, uh, I finally burned out. And uh, I fell into my own depression when I burned out and learned very quickly that depression is not a passive state. It might seem that way to people on the outside, but to the person depressed, it's just an active state of pain that really takes over your entire body from the tip of your hair all the way to the bottom of your feet. And I was actually bedridden with depression for about a month. And luckily I had the wherewithal and the support to seek care and experience mental health care for the first time. I was just blown away by the inefficiencies of not just accessing care, but purely navigating the mental health care ecosystem as a whole. And so my friends and colleagues going through the same concerns and you know what, <laughs> just decided to do something about it. So leverage my experience as an investor, as an entrepreneur, but most importantly as a patient actually, to build Rose into what it is today. I, I see that um, we talk to a lot of entrepreneurs on the show and we see that uh, the most innovative solutions tend to come from someone who has uh, you know, a direct relationship with the, the problem uh, that they want to find a, a solution for because they're just fed up with it. And here, here's another, another case in point. Um, I'm, I'm curious, how has COVID um, exacerbated uh, the, you know, I think we're, it's going to be years before we see all the final results, okay. but I think early results are in around mental health challenges. There's lots of mental health startups right now that are, you know, in there trying to help out. How has that specifically affected you guys? So COVID was a, a silver lining for Rose, and uh, that's because of the it was almost a perfect storm when it came to mental health. You had patients who were unable to visit their therapists. You had therapists who, as well as psychiatrists and clinicians who had no, uh, no telehealth uh, equipment. And then you also had patients who were unable to reach their clinicians and therefore they were then going into further decompensation. So we saw a significant amount of, uh, of new traffic and, and new folks who were not just using telehealth, but, but really honing in on uh, mental health concerns and challenges. Um, prior, to the prior to the pandemic, we saw that one in five Americans experienced experience right. some sort of mental health condition. And now it's actually one in three. So definitely social isolation, loneliness during the pandemic has really increased uh, anxiety and depression. And we're seeing, and, and, and that was a silver lining for us. And I also think it's, it was a silver lining for healthcare in general as telehealth and telemedicine really got the attention that it finally deserved. For those that are interested, we have um, we we had the uh, founder of the World Telehealth Institute on the show last year. Uh, we've done several of those because when when we were in the 
thick of of COVID. That was such a huge concern, especially in the third world and, and what's happening in the developing world. I want to go a little bit into um, what I think was unique from when I first saw Rose was, um, and our listener knows I'm very interested in, in machine learning and, and deep learning and figuring out natural language processing and these kinds of things. How can we use these technologies to help us? And what I saw from what you're doing is you're actually using that to help in early diagnosis. And I'd, I'd love you to explain in, in layman's terms, if you could, how, how you're able to do that and what's different about that. Sure. Um, in, in tackling this problem, I knew that from my experience uh, in, in healthcare that the only way to really solve this problem was to leverage technology to augment care. This really was not a, or this was not a problem that we can just throw bodies at because there just aren't enough bodies. There aren't enough uh, therapists or psychiatrists out there to help these clinicians. So as a real result of that, uh, we've created a series of algorithms that allow us to uh, be able to uh, predict when patients are experiencing uh, or may experience a mental health condition. We're able to see more efficient ways of providing access to help monitor progress and increase understanding of, of, uh, of the patient and, and the patient understanding more of their con condition. And to answer your question, uh, the way that we do this is really by, uh, by exploring and utilizing the patient's own data, um, so their health data. So we look at uh, data on the, we, we look at asynchronous, synchronous uh, data, as well as active and passive data collection and digital biomarkers to help us uh, determine and risk stratify a patient. So things like, your smartwatch, being able to pull your activity, being able to pull your heart rate, and then looking at your phone, being able to look at um, the light sensitivity monitor or the accelerometer. Those are some biomarkers that we use that can help us with really understanding a, a patient through passive data collection and uh, leveraging data from the electronic health records allows us to then take another look, a, a grander look, and also more on the physical side um, to see certain things that may make a patient more apt for a mental health concern, looking at potential ICD-10 codes, looking at medications diagnosed, looking at even a potential comorbid issue that they were just diagnosed with, such as uh, um, cancer or heart disease or heart attack, or even, um, some sort of, uh, I would say, some sort of chronic condition. And but then this, the the signals that you're getting, you're interpreting these signals. And I, I've I've looked at your team, and you've you've got a, a lot of researchers and a chief medical officer. You've it, it feels like you've got the intellectual horsepower there to figure out what are the right things to do with this data. It, saying it predicts is a is a big claim. How have mm -hmm. you gone, how have the clinical trials gone in terms of like, because, you know, that in any new, new idea like this, we, we, we while we love the idea, we want to, this is very serious stuff with mental health. How sure. are the trials gone and, and what kind of tests have you done? Sure. So we are based in, in from Johns Hopkins or rooted within Johns Hopkins. So we love our studies. Um, we completed a phase one RIV study in Baltimore last year. Uh, it was a 45 patient study, 30 on the intervention arm and 15 on the control. Uh, in that five weeks, we saw that 79% of our patient used the, the platform every single day for that five weeks. We saw that 73% of patients improved with their depression scores going from severe to, to mild or moderate. And we saw that 70% uh, improved with their anxiety going from severe to mild to moderate. And this was mostly a feasibility study, but it was great data and uh, initial study that is now setting us up for a 200 patient study at Intermountain Healthcare and also at Johns Hopkins. So I'm curious, is it, um, 
one of the things I was studying for a while and trying to predict um, potential industry uh, injuries in athletes was be able to do kind of the same thing. It's like, how can we go mm-hmm. to the sensor verse, if you will, be able to pull in all of these data points and then be able to analyze those to say, boy, you're going to, you might want to lay back today, or you might want to step it up today because you've got a little more energy and, and sure. that's possible. Um, the, the hard part is, is everybody is so different, right? Mm-hmm. Every, all of those things are different. Um, and, and the specific question is, do, are you doing any language processing where like listening or like reading stuff that they write or listening to them or, and, and being able to, and then what models did you use to teach the AI? Sure. So yes, um, we uh, leverage, uh, we leverage the journal entries. We all know the value of the, of journaling when it comes sure. to therapy with mental health. And we've taken advantage of that by building an in-house natural language processing system that runs on the journal entries and we're able to then detect semantic tone. So we can leverage sentiment analysis and with a 95% F1 accuracy score, Hmm. we're able to determine whether a person is going through anxiety, depression, uh, family issues, health issues, relationship issues. And then when we target it even more, we're able to create a rose score, which is essentially a patient's mental health credit score. And that ultimately determines the care pathway and the type of information that rose produces to the patient. In my own experience working with a therapist, it was it was a collaborative effort, uh, you know, between the two of us. Is the rose score something that's just shown to the doctors and the doctors figure out what they need to do? Or is the patient like I would think that might even add in my anxiety if my number yeah. was dropping or going higher, or whatever. That's a that's a good point, and that's uh, that, that's a great thing to pick up. So yes, um, the clinician is the only one that has access to that rose score. The patient, however, has uh, a meter uh, that would show on a scale of green to red, uh, green, yellow, red, mild, moderate, severe, where they fall and how they're doing on, on that specific day. So that, that itself can go back and forth, but the actual score is meant for the clinician and is really meant for our algorithms to be able to get the patient to the right yeah. care at the right yeah. time. That makes sense. I know that uh, one of the things that's challenging in healthcare is we're all so, um, I think, good at getting all these devices and we're all very, those of us who are, you know, hacking our health, if you will, biohackers, or are trying to figure out how to make most out of that information. And we can kind of maybe misinterpret it. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that um, the professionals are, are, are taking advantage of that. And one question in my meditation app on uh, some frequency, maybe it's once a month, it'll, it'll just check in with me. How are you doing? doing? It'll just ask me a couple of different questions. And then based on my answers, it'll say, Hey, might want to try this. You might want to try that. Is there that level of kind of checking in with patients as well with Rose? Yes, we uh, do smart nudging. So we smart nudging. nudging. (laughs) Uh So we, we are able to determine the best time to send you a push oh. notification so we know whether we can analyze the biomarkers and if we see that you've been uh, stagnant for 13 14 hours on its thursday at 3 p.m we'll nudge you to uh with a positive tip to to get to get become active and um, go outside we're able to uh leverage da- daily data so on a daily basis, we ask the patient to enter in their daily mood, daily anxiety, and daily sleep, daily sleep scores on a Likert scale of one to five. And that data really drives the analysis for the patient. And that's what allows us to nudge them as well as push, push curated content for self-care. So this is all done very much under a doctor's guidance. So this isn't yeah. someone self-diagnosing and doing this on their own and, hey, I don't feel good, so I'm going to go get Rose and I'm going to be better. This is all 
part of a clinical uh, approach to where the, the, you're, you're as much helping the doctor help the patient. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, that is one of the main differentiators between Rose and the other companies out there, including the meditation app that you mentioned. We're a serious clinical platform where there has to be a clinician on the other end yeah. for the, each patient. So in order to be a part of the Rose platform, your clinician has to give you a, a, a unique code in which you would then use to join Rose. And the reason for that is because we are, we are getting very sensitive data. We're asking questionnaires about um, their daily, uh, whether they're, harm, they're, they're, they're thinking about harming themselves. Uh, and those, those types of questions, you need to have someone on the other end who can intercept it and be in a position to actually uh, act on it. Whereas there are about 10,000 mental health apps out there, less than 1% of them are even are backed by some sort of evidence base. But in order for us to drive true care and be in a position of improving these patients' outcomes, a clinician has to be part of the process. I, I am really glad to hear that. I'm so glad you guys are working so hard on the program. Yes, and that's actually a big part of it is uh, to my fellow colleagues, Dr. Matthew Peters, who is an attending neuropsychiatrist at Hopkins, and Dr. Atif Adam, who is a former department head at, of uh, the Department of Mental Health at Hopkins, who have really driven the clinical direction as well as the technical direction of the company.